as they were a .com, like they weren't really a .com, yeah. or like watching a dream, it's like, oh, it's cool, but, but Pokemon Go, you're spending hours and hours on an AR game, yeah. well, that, uh, which is, yeah. I think, kind of interesting. It takes it to a new level of acceptance. That's a really amazing point, because I think that people are engaging it, uh, uh, with it on the level of content, as opposed to like just the technology, or like just sort of like a gimmick. So uh, I, I always think of New York Times as a really good example of the type of uh, 360 video content that uh, people, uh, they uh, consume because they like it, they don't consume it because it's just sort of like a cheap thrill or a gimmick. It's like, it's amazing filmmaking, it's really well done, uh, and people are uh, sort of downloading it because uh, they're getting something from it. They're getting sort of an immersive experience of news and nonfiction. Uh, and Pokemon Go is the same thing for like video games. It's like people, um, you know, people like it because of the content of the game. Like it's not just because it's, you know, a new shiny gadget or something. It's just, um, yeah, people people like it. People engage on it in sort of a different level of technology. Technology is what makes it go as opposed yeah. to a feature exactly. or the draw from it. Uh, I mean, what are, you're, you have a different take on the technology where you take it from more from a cultural, like a fashion standpoint. Mm -hmm. What have you seen? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I focus on uh, fashion and technology and how AR and VR are touching like, the beauty and fashion industry. It's been interesting to see it grow. I haven't been following AR for years, like some you guys might have, but it's kind of new for me. Um, I would agree with you that I think that 2016 is going to be the year of AR. I think we have to remember that like Snapchat kind of groomed people for augmented reality. I think that that introduced it to people to show what it could do. And I think that for me that was really interesting because it groomed people for like the Snapchat augmented reality features, groomed people for this idea that augmented reality could be something that changes the way you see yourself. And beauty has always been an industry that's about changing the way you see yourself, but the potentials for that are huge. When you think about um, a Toronto-based company, for example, called Modi Face, which partnered with Sephora last year to release this app called um, Virtual, the Virtual Artist app. And it's a feature within the app where you can actually try on lipstick on your live video um, from the Sephora store just at the swipe of your finger. So you don't even have to be in a Sephora. You're looking at your phone and you can try on any lipstick in the store and then purchase it. Um, you know, there's also features that Modi Face does where you can change your entire face, um, you know, for plastic surgery companies and things like that. So thinking about the potentials of the way we see ourselves and the way that we can be, I think augmented reality is, is huge. I think that 2017 is going to be the year of VR. And the reason I think that is because I just read Ready Player One. It was the best mm. book I've read in a long time. It's and book. Ready Player One. Okay. And, um, Steven Spielberg is making a film about this in 2017, and I suspect it's going to be a virtual reality film. This hasn't been confirmed yet, but if it is a virtual reality film, and if it's a blockbuster film, it's one of those films that everybody has to go see, and you're going to go to like a VR theater to go see it, because there is a VR theater that just happened up in Toronto. It's called the Vivid VR, and it's on Dundas. Um, if it's one of those films that everyone has to go see, I think then people will sort of get it, something will click, and it'll be a part of everyone's experience. I think right now it's been sort of like in the gaming world and it's like enthusiasts who own a VR headset. But if you have the opportunity to go to a theater and experience it and um, you know have that wow experience and understand what you were talking about, how it's not just gimmicky, it's actually this is a whole new medium for cinematic storytelling that's going to change everything. I think that's, uh, that's going to be big and that's going to be in 2017. Uh, and to add to that, which, which is interesting because it's kind of like maybe like the av avatars brought to 3D. Like 3D has been around since like the 50s. That maybe it brings and it, and it was always a, as a gimmick for a uh, for like a movie at Disney World or something. You know, 3D. But this kind of took it to a new level with putting it mainstream. But I think if that if Steven Spielberg film takes off, it could be even bigger for VR because still 3D, for example, with Avatar is still a gimmick. You can still watch the same movie. But you can't really watch the same movie in VR and 2D. The only movies I think that could be transferred to uh, to VR with it would be Birdman or Gravity. Yeah, it's like really the difference between like theater and movies. So they're, they're two completely different platforms. And a virtual reality film is going to be. My brother's a virtual reality filmmaker, actually.
actually. And when you're watching his films, it's like you could watch the guy talk, or you could watch the girl talk, or you could turn around and look at like their picture frame on their bedside table, and like that's part of the narrative as well, and it's all about exposition, and it's like, it requires such a different, like such a round, I, I, I'm, I can't think of the word right now, but it requires this part of your brain that like, I just admire people who are making uh, 360 content right now, because that's, yeah. Would, would you say that people are, are really think it's more than just an experience when they watch these 360 movies, like where they remember it, the characters, they remember the, the story, the lines, like you would in your favorite movie? Oh, I think story is not going to go away. Like, we're not going to be compelled by it if there is no story. There are, like, elements of story that are going to bring us back to these things time and again. I mean, like, if, whether you, any type of artistic expression, right, there's still those elements of story that you have to be tied to, but it's just going to be cool to see how it's going to be a new platform for expression, and I think that's what's really exciting about it. And David, uh, you, it's funny because you introduced me to Vivid Fest, and what, what you've been trying to do is something similar to Vivid Fest, where you're trying to create long-term urban experiences in VR, AR. What have you been? What have you noticed this year compared to this, this year? I think the. Um, <coughs> So we say 2016 is the, the year of the, like, I think that's true because all the consumer devices, you know, Vive and Oculus are released this year. But I think the biggest release hasn't happened yet. And actually there's two of them. One is the PlayStation VR that puts, you know, VR gaming at a way more um, affordable price point. Like, for example, it would cost, it's about, you know, like 1,200 Canadians to put together a PlayStation rig. Whether uh, like a PC to play VR, you know, you're looking at about three to four thousand minimum, and so that's one thing that hasn't happened yet. And the other, even bigger thing, is Google Daydream, that would turn pretty much everyone's <coughs> cell phone, their smartphone, you know, which pretty much everyone I know already have, turn that into a VR device. You know, that is doing to VR what essentially Pokemon Go is doing to AR. You know, utilizing what people already have as sort of a gateway to like a new type of experience. Now, once once people are accustomed to that, like for example, Pokemon Go, right? When you guys put on the Hololens, you immediately can know what I can use this for. Okay, I can use this to see Pokemon's kind of in different places. I can throw balls with my hand. You know, do different things. So it allows people to see applications of future technology. So once those come out, like they'll uh, adapt it way quicker than you know if it's just a blank space. So I think you know the two kind of two things that hasn't happened yet is what's going to define 2016. I, I want to expand upon your point with uh, with the PlayStation VR and Google Daydream making things affordable for mass adoption. Uh, I can see I, I, I see people buying the equipment, but I don't really see. The games like they would buy games for a console like a Nintendo or Xbox just because like a lot of these games that people like they only seem to try them once. Is that going to change with PlayStation VR? Yeah so PlayStation actually Oculus right here right so I think one of the key difference between Oculus and Vive right now is Oculus offers a longer play experience. You know it's more in-depth games you can have RPGs where you play for you know like a hundred hour story mode. And then plus you can do other things in it. Whether as um, Vive, since it's a stand-up experience, it's more for like quicker playing sessions. You know, I feel the ideal time is around 30 minutes. To be on Vive, you kind of try something out. You, there's some really cool mechanics. And uh, and PlayStation would be, I find, you know, looking at the titles that it, it, it sort of announced, it's going to be closer to the Oculus than the um, Vive, which is going to offer longer, more in-depth play sessions. Instead of like you know giving you tech demos, you see a lot in other systems. Yeah. So it's not all just games though. There's applications, and so with the Vive, you could continue to use Paintbrush forever and, and make it. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So you know, Paintbrush, that's something that's like creative in VR. That's kind of like a whole nother field outside of entertainment, which is like watching 360 videos and playing games.
distinguish those two, right? It's like content that's just, you're just sitting back and consuming it, will that be, you know, adopted a lot more quickly because it's easier to have that in like something like a Google Cardboard versus something that's more interactive and maybe requires a little bit more sophisticated hardware. Well, it's interesting when it talks about like things like Google Cardboard and these hardwares and even go a little bit to Pokemon Go, like Pokemon Go is considered cool. And that's why it's probably going to spearhead the growth. And one reason why wearables didn't take off so quickly was because it was not fashionable to wear most of these wearables. And these headsets are things that don't even look that cool to wear about. I mean, what do you think about it in terms of the idea of these the technologies being cool in order for it to grow? Yeah, I think that um, with AR, it's not something you're wearing, it's an experience. Like, you don't point to a pair of jeans and say, that's augmented reality. It's an experience that you're using usually your mobile phone or your iPad or something to engage with. So I don't think that the AR itself like can be fashionable. So that's, that's, it's more like the experience that it's providing. Um, but the headset though, I mean like I don't yeah. know. It's, it's not cool, people are not gonna wanna walk around with it. Like Google Glass. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, I don't think that VR is something you're meant to go walk around with. Like that's dangerous, isn't it? You're not meant to go walk around with VR. But the idea is like it's not gonna be something that you're gonna wear as a fashion statement, again, it's about the experience, and I think that there's a huge opportunity, especially with fashion, because fashion is already such an immersive industry. If you think about what a fashion show tries to do with the sound and the lights and the color and the, you know, the models and everything, it's trying to create that immersive experience. But what's happened up to this point is it's been like the very elite few that get access to that front row seat and can experience that. What we're seeing fashion designers do is now taking this technology film their runway shows in 360 and then give everybody access to that. So the catwalks are now becoming completely democratized and I think that a sign of a good, healthy technology that's moving things forward is when it's democratizing access to experiences. And so we see that happening. Yeah. Do you think this stuff could ever become a replacement? Like for example, rather than have a regular fashion show, everything can be done and just do it in VR. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, Part of the fashion experience, um, I mean, it is rooted in materiality. Like, um, I mean, it's definitely a secondary experience to, well, I mean, I'd even say it's like a tertiary experience to like the actual clothes because like the, um, I mean, you know, fashion, the, you know, the initial experience is sort of um, like wearing clothes or, you know, the sort of experience of clothes. And then there's like sort of the display of clothes, like being at a fashion show and sort of being in that environment. That environment does connote a lot of, you know, status, a lot of, um, you know, sort of intangible things. And then you go to kind of have that tertiary experience where you're experiencing other people watching fashion. So um, I think if anything, it venerates the sort of materiality of, uh, of you know, reality. So. Uh, you know, like we're talking about like virtual reality, you're like watching a fashion show in virtual reality, but it's actually of real reality. It's just the way you're experiencing it, it is as like a second or third hand consumer. Yes. Well, sorry. It's more important though if you can all of a sudden start trying on any fashion in the world on your own body and see yourself in it. You know, yeah. that's that's where and there are companies that are experimenting with that. So Converse released an app called the Sampler app where you could see the different shoes on your foot in real time through 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 AR actually. And um, you could swipe through and then eventually like buy the shoes that you wanted. That was really cool. Kind of like the Maudie Face example that I mentioned, like lipstick, shoes, that's like relatively easy. I mean it's still hard because you're moving and the shoe is moving with your foot. But there have been, like Topshop has experimented with augmented reality mirrors where um, you can see the clothes on you, but fit is still a huge challenge, right? Because everybody's body is different and it doesn't matter how many images they have of bodies, like that's that's gonna be a challenge for a long time, I think. And if someone can get it, and then you know that's a billion dollar business right there. But what it looks like right now is um, the augmented reality applications that are trying to show you this is what that dress would look like on you. Um, it just looks like a sticker layered on top of your body rather than like how So they need more mixed body. reality where it's actually going into a physical They need world. more mixed reality and more data about the body, about um, different body shapes and how, how like, 
fabric is so high touch, right? And the stretch and the drape and everything, right? There's so many components there, but I, th I think we'll get there. It's just we're not there yet. Well, it's interesting because, David, you're an economics guy, and uh, you know, you, a lot of times, like, if people feel like, well, we don't have to spend as much money, we'll get something that's almost as good, right? You think people, like, for example, virtual vacations, right? If it's almost as good, even though you're not really feeling the same thing, well, people, you know, like, you know, just like clothing, well, we don't have to go to the store, we just prefer the convenience thing, and the worst that can happen is getting a refund or something like that. I mean, do you think you could really, really you not take off? Mm -hmm. Well, do you think it could really, you know, people just feel like we don't need the real experience anymore, we'll just go with well, the People are always going to need the real experience. Like, for example, when TV came out, like, people are going to say, oh, no one's going to go to the cinema. That's not true. It's, they're still selling out like every blockbuster out there. You know, um, like how even what vinyl is not, there's vinyl shops around. Like that should have been replaced like five different times already. And it's still like there's still places selling it. So I don't think like real experiences are ever going to be like completely replaced. But you mentioned the almost good kind of um, aspect. I feel right now. Like, in terms of a vacation, right, VR isn't almost good, you know. It's still got a far ways to go to get to that almost as good point. Maybe in a few years, it will be at that point. Um, people are definitely going to kind of consider those for, you know, maybe like a cheaper or like a one day or one hour kind of experience going on to like a different place, different planet. But it's never completely replaced uh, actual travel. I just have a question uh, related to you know your comment about VR vacations. I you know I'm thinking more about extending that and say you know uh, when you go on vacation you, you try parasailing you try you know like all this the different experiences there. You could actually use VR and you know try or at least train for you know if you wanted to go surfing you know you can't just go surfing right when you go on your vacation. But if you can use VR to kind of prepare yourself for that. Right, so that you can, you can, when you go to, when you get to reality, you actually have a little bit more background, you know, a little, a little bit more training to, you know, so, so that when you go on vacation, you can actually go surfing right away because you've had, you know, you've tried it out in, in VR and you've had the mindset of, you know, trying it out. Yeah. I think that's that's a good application.